Welcome back! I'm Elrinth, the first boss, and I hope you guys had a nice Christmas. My friend Wille gave me this mug, I really like it. He knows I love Zelda. Anyways, today I want to give you guys some recommendations on Famicom Disk System games, which I really like. But before I do that, we're gonna go through a couple of things. So I've been working on a PSIO slash PS1 Digital video where PS1 Digital is the HDMI solution and PSIO is the SD card solution for the PlayStation 1. So PS1 Digital has had a new firmware released, 1.3.3, which has fixed some kind of a graphical glitch uh, thing happening in Chrono Cross where it would kind of lose sync, but it doesn't specifically say it's for Chrono Cross, but I experienced, experienced this in Chrono Cross at least. Hopefully it's fixed now, so we'll see. And updating this uh, PS1 Digital is super duper easy. You just update it via Wi-Fi and I hope all other HDMI and SD card solutions can take after this and use this in their uh, solutions. But we'll see. Oh, and uh, PSIO has had two firmware releases since I got it. And uh, I still haven't finished the review there on the PSIO, but all the games I've tested has so far worked. A little bit quirky to get some of the games working, but they're working great. Oh, also, a shout out to Frederick Nyqvist for modding my PS1. He's done a fantastic job in the past with other consoles. And I recommend him for you people living in the same country as me. Anyways. Another game called Paprium has finally been released. So I pre-ordered this back in 2017 and uh, uh, it's been quite a debacle between the development of this game. Anyways, it's a uh, beat-em-up for the Mega Drive slash Genesis and uh, it's got some fantastic new audio capabilities which the Mega Drive itself can't do. So it's got like an expansion ship or yeah, some extra ship inside of the cartridge to make that possible. Sadly, it seems it's Mega SG incompatible, so the analog console currently can't play it as intended. Hopefully Kevtris can get this working in, in the future. However, seems the Kevtris hasn't received a copy of the game, but someone hopefully can send him it uh, a copy so he can fix the issues with that. Oh, and one more thing. I'm actually working on a Doom port for the Virtual Boy, and uh, I haven't really come very far. But I've got this like uh, web page where I'm uh, trying to implement uh, the 3D, and it doesn't look <laughs> quite right. But uh, I've got the interface running up on the Virtual Boy, and it looks pretty good. So uh, yeah, that's uh, what I'm working on. Since my last video, a new jailbreak firmware has been released, which has blown my expectations away. So let's check out the release log together. Here we go. So it says, says here, latest update, previous updates will be blah, 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 blah. Controller test added. So we've added a control test to the menu system and uh, LNR reverse on the R RCA jacks, fixed filter cutoffs display bug. I'm guessing it's the cross uh, um, box, it's the checkbox. And here we got the big news. Added full FDS support with manual, semi-automatic and automatic side switching. See in this section below for operation notes. So this is a big news. So the Famicom disk system added to the analog NT jailbreak. That means we can play over 200 official games where the last one was released in 1992, in the December, called Yanken Disk Shiro. It's a rock paper sisters game. But this is really great because I love Famicom Disk System games, but we're gonna go more in depth on the Famicom Disk System games later. Let, let's continue reading through here the changelog. Added Super Russian Roulette Mapper. So that's the Sapper game where you, I, I think you shoot yourself or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> Added support for Halloween, Haunted Halloween 85 and 86. That's cool. Added versus palette support for composite and S video. That's nice. Reduced default expansion audio level for better balance with internal audio. That's good because I noticed quite quickly that the audio level for uh, expansion audio was wasn't really perfect. 
pass-through mode can now be cancelled by tapping reset twice. That's good. Fixed copiness mini VRAM dumping, save games on cartridges can be now preserved. So it seems save games were lost on the cartridge when you used um, VRAM dumping previously. Fixed Vice Project Doom gun deck starting in debug mode with second controller plugged in. So this I showed in my previous video. Fixed VRC register swap function. Use both VRC6 and VRC6 swap for Madara or Esper Dream 2. And just VRC6 for Akumaju Densetsu. That's good. Fixed Famicom Disk System audio channel imbalance when panning sliders are centered. Okay. Fixed small FDS channel bug. Fixed popping square sound wave audio in Eggerland. Susu e no to tabidachi and Eggerland make you no fukatsu. Fixed versus Goonies graphics issue. Fixed game of the goose scrap fix issue. Not sure what that game is. Fixed DPCM cor corruption bug for Paul and Dendy games. Dendy modes. So uh, a guy said he had problems with uh, Mr. Gimmick audio when he played his PAL cartridge. And uh, it seems this one is the fix for that. Fixed MMC5 Castlevania 3 PAL, PAL cat cartridge functionality. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Fixed Dendy mode for Everdrives and cartridges. That's nice. Fixed Dendy mode NMI flag. That's awesome. And then we have the GB GBC section here. So he fixed palette issues affecting multiple games, including uh, Pokemon Pinball, Mega Man Extreme, Pooh and Tigger's Honey Safari, mm, Harvest Moon 3. So I actually noticed this bug myself with the Mega Man Extreme. So I'm one of the reporters that um, reporters on the GitHub for that. So and it's fixed. Well done, Kevtris, you fixed it. Uh, fixed wave channel audio bug. So I actually noticed this that. One of the channels were missing when I played uh, Zelda Link's Awakening Lux. Uh, the bass channel just disappeared in the, the Lost Forest and it's like, where did it go? <laughs> so this probably fixes that. And then he says, fix Tokyo Disney Crash when playing 5th level. Okay. Fix Crash in Barbie Magic Genie Adventure when using powers. Okay. Fix Razor Freestyle Scooter and Lufia failing to load. So I tried Lufia previously and it would not load and I tried it with the new firmware and it works perfectly. So Lufia is one of the better games for the GBC. Check that out, out by the way. Fix Lego Racers Cloud Color Bug. Okay. Then we have a ColecoVision section here. And he says added Famicom Network Controller functionality. So I just want to quickly show here. So that's this controller over here. It's the Famicom Network controller pad, and it's got a bunch of numbers here, just like the ColecoVision controllers and Intellivision controllers did. This is actually a controller which was used with the um, Famicom Network uh, uh, modem, modem, which was used for a bunch of uh, like betting games, online betting games for horses and stuff like that. And for the Intellivision and ColecoVision, you kind of need this controller, not for every game, but for many games. Or you could get the SNES to NES adapter by Rafnet and the official SNES NTT datapad, which was also used for like horse online betting games with the SNES modem. Anyways, let's continue with the Farmer update here. So he fixed Penguin Adventure for ColecoVision and Genesis. He added support for this pad. That's awesome. And fixed some audio slider bugs. And for the SMS, he also added support for this Famicom Network controller. That's awesome. Fixed BIOSes loading built in games. That's cool. Use end button on Famicom Network or Super Famicom. NTT data keypad to simulate pressing console reset button. Okay. So I'm guessing this it's this button over here on this controller. This one over there. Yeah. So let's 
new check out this so in television added famicom network functionality zero a and b are three buttons zero on the keypad is mapped to dot added player one to swap to course menu okay and for the spc he fixed audio static bug and that's all the fixes in 6.5 jailbreak version it's awesome well done so a guy called Paisley Boxers at the Classic Gaming Discord compiled games running with normal pad on the Intellivision. So these are those. So last time I said that with the Genesis core you could uh, use the SNES controller. However, I wasn't really too specific on how to do that. So you actually use the 8-bit DO retro receiver, which you can connect to your standard port on the Analog Anti Mini Noir. And you use your old 8-bit DO SNES Bluetooth controller. So that's one way to play Genesis games. Or you could use the M30 Genesis controller. It works with the retro receiver as well as well as the Wii U Pro Controller. However, you need a specific firmware for this, and you can find that on Analog's <laughs> webpage. So Kevtress answered a couple of questions over at the Discord servers, and it seems save states are not worth implementing currently, as it's just too much job. We have to implement them independently of for each mapper, and that's gonna take a very long time, and it's not really worth it. If you want to use save states, get the EverDrive N8. Okay, so now over to the Famicom Disk System. So when you want to use your Famicom Disk System ROMs on your Analog Anti Mini Noir, you need to clear the uh, FDS in the header. And you can do that with a hex editor such as HXD. Also, there's some problematic games where the game would just pause automatically or something like that. and that's because, for example, in Galforce, you have to disable the automatic load in the Famicom Disk System uh, core menu on the Analog Anti Mini Noir. One game you absolutely should uh, avoid, <laughs> uh, unless you're a masochist and want to uh, wait for load times all the time when you play the game, is uh, Relics. Ankoku Yosai on the Famicom Disk System. It's just a super slow game and uh, uh, it's just uh, like every single screen you walk to you have to wait for loading and even when you're jumping it's super sluggish controls and yeah uh, I can't recommend it to anyone. Oh and some Famicom Disk System games had different gameplay than their NES counterparts. For example Ice Climber implemented some wind physics, that's pretty cool. It's the same as in uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 on the Famicom Disk System. Uh, also you had Versus Excitebike which had the track editor and you could save and load tracks onto the floppy. That's pretty cool. Games which existed on both the NES and the Famicom Disk System had some differences in the Famicom Disk System version. For example, different music, sound effects or save function. Uh, the original Castlevania or Akumaju Dracula had a save functionality as well as when you finish the game, uh, the next time it starts over after you beat Dracula, uh, the game is slightly harder or the enemies are placed differently. So that's pretty cool. And then you have Dracula 2. Noroi no Fuin, which is Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, which had the save, save function as well as slightly different um, music where it used the Famicom Disk System audio capabilities. And then you have Kid Icarus or Hikari Shinwa Palutena no Kagami, uh, where the game had some slightly different audio. Uh, for example, the Grim Reapers made some weird noises and the uh, opening theme and ending theme is very different, but other than that, I think the game is pretty much the same. Ah, of course you have the save function as well. And then you have Link no Boken, The Legend of Zelda 2, which had um, slightly different sound effects and some differences in the... I think it's the opening theme and ending theme. Other than that, I think the game is pretty much the same. I did 
see that a couple of things were different as well. Where you got the candle and got, got into the cave and there's no power up or anything in there. If I remember it correctly, there should be a heart in there, but I, I guess not. And then we have Metroid, which had uh, the save function and some very different audio sound effects. And then you have Section Sata, uh, Z, <laughs> Sata. <laughs> Section Z for the Famicom Disk System, which is um, one of my favorite childhood games. It's very difficult to remember which uh, section you should go to, but anyways, it has the save functionality. And then you have Zelda. Zelda 1, The Legend of Zelda, Hyrule Fantasy, which has the save functionality as well as some differences in the opening theme and ending theme, as well as some other sound effects. Oh, and you have to defeat the pulse voice with the microphone. Okay, so let's get into the recommendations here. So first up we have I Senshi Nikol, Love Warrior Nikol, which I've previously recommended, but it's one of my favorite games. It's like a top-down uh, adventure game. You go through stages and gain power-ups in the stages and defeat a couple of different bosses and destroy some crystal cores and collect some pieces. I think it's three per level. And after that you take a ship to the next level. It's pretty cool. And uh, you're out to save your girlfriend which was captured by the mother brain or whatever. <laughs> uh, next up we have a game called All One, which I don't have. Um, it's a Famimaga Disc Vol 3. A really good... Ah, not really good. It's a decent puzzle game where you push blocks uh, until the one is pointing upwards. So you go around in a, like a 3D view as well as a top-down view and you can s watch the the dices or die uh, to see which side is which and you push it over in order to get the one to be upwards and then you finish the stage once all the die on the stage is facing upwards with a one. I found it qu quite fun. Then we have Arumana no Kisiki, which is like an Indiana Jones game. However, you don't have a whip. Uh, you use weapons to defeat enemies and I have to recommend that the defeating the purple enemies, they spawn randomly from the uh, houses or whatever you want to call it, doors. And uh, when you defeat them, they drop like a dagger or a gun or a, ah, some kind of weapon you can use. Also, there's specific walls you can destroy with, uh, I think it's the kind of a cannonball power-up. Uh, or it looks like a mine, maybe. But you use that to destroy some walls and uh, you can unlock some power-ups like more health and stuff like that. So rem remember to do that. Also, when you push up and B, you throw out like a grappling hook like this. And you have to jump up to it and climb it. And in order to drop down from it, you push right and the jump button. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and next up we have a game called Big Challenge Dogfight Spirit, which is a top-down shooter, which I thought was pretty addictive and funny and quite easy and playable. Then you have the Konami game Bio Miracle Bukutte Upa, and you're this little baby walking around stages, uh, platforming, and uh, this baby is also playable in YY World 2 and yeah it's pretty good music and the gameplay is pretty okay I, I think it's funny to play and then you have Eggerland which is a low low basically but it's not the low low we got here in Europe or North America it's its own game and then you have a a second Eggerland game which I don't own but it's also very good I think that one is actually better than this one uh, however it's much harder and the world is like one big place so you go from one room to either up or right and then it's th the next stage directly instead of like back to a overworld or something like that which it is in the other ones and then you have a game called Esper Dream 
which is an RPG, and this game is actually translated, so you can play it in English if you patch the ROM, and um, it's pretty cool. You got uh, real-time battles, and I recommend playing the translated ROM as it's uh, quite hard to understand the Japanese. Uh, so the townspeople, so we can understand the townspeople. And then we have a game called Electrician. So you're this, uh, yeah, you're an, <laughs> you're an electrician. <laughs> and uh, you have to walk around and um, pull cables. And uh, put electricity into small rooms. And once you do put all the electricity into all rooms for uh, like vertical tower, then you can co continue to the next stage and you have to navigate through like a sewer level and then you go do the electrician thingy again and etc. Blah blah blah. <laughs> next up we have Falcion. I've shown this previously. It's pretty good um, like a 3D game. You can use the 3D system Famicom glasses with it. It's pretty cool. Then you have a game called Firebam, which I had no clue about how it was until I tried it for a bit, and it feels a lot like Link's Awakening, Zelda 2, without the overworld aspect, and it's got some really weird enemy designs and character designs, and uh, you you don't really. I'm not sure if you get stronger by defeating enemies, but you get more gold and you can purchase new items. Or you don't actually get gold, you get like fire <laughs> and your character's name is BAM, so yeah. <laughs> it's really strange, but I, I thought it was pretty fun. And uh, this game proves Sonic should have been possible on the NES as well, because there's some things which go like lightning fast. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a game called Fire Rock. So this game, I actually, I have a love and hate uh, relation to this game because the controls are atrocious. I absolutely hate the controls. They are floaty and really hard to control. Like you don't know how you're supposed to do to climb walls and jumping is like you're going bouncing around all everywhere. It's like, and it's a maze. You go in this vertical, uh, corridor sort of and uh, there's rooms teleporting you all over, all over the world so it's really annoying but I thought it was pretty cool and a uh, <laughs> weird concept <laughs> and then we have Gyrus a really cool shooter on the Famicom disk system by Konami check it out and then we have this weird game called Kick Challenger Airfoot uh, Yasai no Kuni no Ashi Senshi. And that's this weird game. You're a tomato and you got two feet with a tomato and you're walking like this. Duk, duk, duk. And you hold the A button to move the feet. And once you let go of the A button, you can no longer move the character. However, you can like move the actual feet in the air and point it. And then you can press B button to attack in that direction. And then you can hold down A again to continue moving. It's pretty pretty weird game. <laughs> I thought it was quite funny to play. And then we have a game called Night Move. So the, in this game you play as the chess horse, aka the knight. And uh, you can only walk just like that uh, chess piece. And uh, you collect hearts and each time you like move to a, a spot on the uh, tile set that tile becomes sort of used and uh, once you've used it I think it's three times in a row then that tile can no longer be moved to so you move to the the hearts and collect them and uh, it uh, sort of refreshes the tiles for each set and it moves the heart to a new position and you keep doing that and it's pretty funny then we have Make You Jin Dababa. In this game, you jump either one or two tiles, and all you can do is jump. And it's really hard and uh, pretty cool. Uh, I, I like the music in it, and it uses the Famicom expansion audio pretty obviously. Then we have Muero Twinbee, Cinnamon, Hakase, Wo Sukue. 
So this is pretty cool. It's a three-player simultaneous uh, co-op game, if you'd like to. It's either side-scrolling or top-down shooter, depending on stage. And I think it's cool that we have a three-player game on the Famicom disk system. And next up we have Naso no Murasayemo no Mio. <laughs> Naso no Murasame Murasame Yo. Which uses the same engine as Zelda 1. It's actually very easy to know it's the same engine because the sound effects in this game are the exact same ones as in Zelda 1. And then we have Otoki, you're this flying super dude thingy, which whenever you attack it makes like a sound and it's synced to the music and you pick up sort of uh, notes and instruments and it makes new noises whenever you attack, it's really weird and <laughs> quite funny. Then we have a game called Panic Space, Famimaga Disc Vol 2. I thought this game was really cool. You move these uh, sort of reflective things and uh, you point a laser to the exit in order to open it. And if it doesn't point to the exit and straight into the wall, you die and you have to try the stage again. So you have to move the, the sort of mirrors or blocks into the correct positions and, uh, and then you can continue to the next stage. I really loved it. It's sort of low, low-ish. Then you have Super Mario Bros. 2. The actual Super Mario Bros. 2 we never received in Europe or America because it was deemed too hard for our audiences. And yeah, it is very hard. I have not finished this game. I've come to, I think it's World 6, and then it's just too hard for me. I want to finish this game someday, but uh, <laughs> I need to put more hours into it. And then we have Tobidase Daisakusen by Square. It's really cool, uh, sort of Space Harrier-ish game. However, you're just running and then jumping over like gaps, and uh, navigating and picking up stars and stuff like that. And at, at the end of the stage, there's a boss. And that's when you start flying and jumping like, uh, it, it gets exactly like Space Harrier and you can shoot like that as well. It's very cool. Oh, and it has this 3D mode. Next up we have Yokai Yashiki. It's like, uh, I can't really compare this to any game, but uh, it's sort of like Goonies-ish, Goonies 2. However, you never go into the 3D section. So you like walk around this mansion and you've got the flashlight and this flashlight gets stronger the more batteries you get. And whenever you take a hit, you lose a bit of the battery until you die. And so your, your attacks get weaker each time you take damage and you can like upgrade it. So it's pretty cool. Then we have Yumekoyo Doki Doki Panic, which is uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 here in Europe or America. And it's really cool. I do, however, recommend the European or American game more than this as it's slightly more refined. This does have save files, so that's good. But yeah, it's basically Mario 2, but with a bit different sound effects. Then we have a game called You Maze, uh, and it's basically Pac-Man but with power-ups. Pretty cool. And finally, we have a game called Xanak, which is a shooter, and I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah, so that's all for today, and I hope you guys have a great evening, or night, or day, or whatever. <laughs> and uh, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!